How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel and we have our first video of the year. We're actually going to talk about customizing some characters. We're going to use one of the free assets for January. It's one of the free assets for the month. You want to make sure you download that and we're going to be adding a metahuman custom body. So make sure you stick all the way to the end so you can see how that works. But before that, let me give a shout out to my patrons right here. And thank you to everybody that's supporting the channel. Remember, you can join the Patreon or you can just leave a comment, leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. That also goes a long way. Now, I do have an Instagram now if you want to follow me there. There's also Twitter and follow me on Discord so you can get all your questions answered. Now, let's get started with the video. Okay, here we are in the main map of the ROG accessories. This is one of the things that we're going to be using today. As of the recording of this video, this asset is completely free. It was on free for the month for January, if you're watching this much later. And this is the one that I'm talking about. So if you're still watching this in January, make sure that you get this one because it includes a lot of things and they're all very high quality from the looks of it that you can use to customize your own characters. They also have some other cool assets. And by the way, at Plant Games, if you're watching this video and you wanna, you know, uh, have me look at your other assets, just contact me. It's in the about section. Anyways, once you've downloaded this, you just go into the map and you should get this. That being said, if you wanna do the customization thing like they do on their demo video, make sure that you may that you use a um, gameplay template because if you use the film template, this is gonna happen. Uh, you're not gonna be able to move your character. I don't know how to move the character here because this is not a game template. However, this does work. The intent of this video is not to use this in this way. We're actually going to put things together and create our own character. So I'm going to stop that. Just wanted to mention that, that in case you want to have these assets, uh, that way you need to make a game template and not a film template like I always do. Now you can see there's a bunch of things from here that we can use. We have some cloaks, uh, we have some ropes. I'm actually not gonna use the ropes. I'm going to use something else that is in one of the folders that they provide. But we also have some cool shoulder pads that we're also gonna use. And we're gonna take a look at some of the gloves and select some for our custom character. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because putting these together for animation use, it's not in your usual way. The way that I would put a metahuman, a custom metahuman together is by creating a blueprint and that's it. it. It just works out of the box because the body is already a skeletal mesh and it's just one skeletal mesh. There is a paid plugin that's called skeletal mesh merger that you could use for this, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm actually going to do it one of the ways that they tell you about in the documentation. So I encourage you to read documentation for this. It's usually in here. If you just click on read more, uh, you should find the documentation if you wanna go there. But the way that you do this is that you actually create a blueprint where you make one of these the master and all the other parts actually follow with the animation. I know it sounds weird, but I'm gonna walk you through it. Okay, so I just got a new map, just a regular map, nothing to it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start constructing our character. I like to construct the character first, like select all my pieces, and then we'll put the blueprint together. So we can go into the content. Once you add this to your project, you should have an ROG modular armor. And once you go in there, you can go into armor cloth. And we're gonna use the mannequin version. The reason why we're gonna use mannequin version is because the mannequin is the most compatible with all the animations that I have. So we're just going to go from there. And we have some folders here. We have some chest, boots, helms, and pants. I'm going to choose these because I don't want to create kind of like a mage character. I wanna create more of a warrior character and these will serve for that. So you have your chest here that actually has some sleeves in there too. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna zero out the location by clicking this little arrow here that says reset to default. There you go. Now it is in the center 
of the stage. I'm gonna move that to the sides. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with the boots. And just FYI, you can do this with any of the assets that are in there. Okay, let's do pan so he the boots are not floating in there. Just zero them out. And okay, as you can see, they're all together in the same place. Actually, let me flip the light so we get some light on our character. Much, much better. Okay, so we pretty much have a partial character right here. Uh, we're just missing some stuff. I want to add some shoulder pads. We're missing the hands, of course, and the head. And for that, we're just going to go back into ROG modular armor and we can go into the accessory ropes. Now we're still going to be using the mannequin version and let's look at the shoulders. So for the shoulders, we're going to again be using scattered little meshes. And we have a bunch of here, so let's just try some and see which one looks better so we have this one which is a single shoulder pad we have these which I find really cool let's see we have these two and we have this which actually go across the chest all right so let's see uh, oh let's let's do this one because this one's fun this has a cow's head uh, actually a cow skull but whatever okay so let's try them on so all you have to do is click on them zero them out and there you go that's how they look. They actually fit. All the pieces fit together. There may be a little bit of artifacts here and there, but they all fit together quite nicely. And I dare say this is a very uh, AAA asset if you want to use it for a game. It works very good for film too. And let's see, this one actually fits really well. I'll probably keep this one. Just put it aside. Let's try the one with the chest guard. And as you can see, it actually looks good. It goes over this. It's actually clipping a little bit from here, but um, yeah, you can kind of fake that when you're doing the animations. Just don't focus on these areas. It actually does look pretty cool, but not my favorite. So we're going to put it aside. Let's do the single one. Click here. And this one looks like it doesn't add anything to it. So I'm just going to take it out. Let's try the one with the cow skull. And it actually looks cool for like an evil character or for like a necromancer or a druid or something, this will work very well. But anyways, let's stick with the one that I like, which was this one. Okay, now let's look at the gloves. Again, scattered meshes. There are some gloves here that I do like. Uh, these are very like Witcher 3-esque, if you play that game. Um, we, we can look at other gloves it's like this one. These are your regular leather gloves and you can see you get pretty close and see that the textures are very, very high quality. And we have these with a little bit of, you know, metal over there. Not a fan of those. I think I'm going to stick with these because they actually go with this part. And I'm going to teach you something about the coloring and all that later. Okay, we got the gloves and all we're missing is a head. We're going to talk about the head later because we're going to stick a meta human head on this character. So I'm going to get rid of these. And right now, this is a character that is pretty much in pieces. So if you were to animate this, if you were to throw it in sequencer, you would have to create an animation per these. The good part about these modular armor pieces is that they're all skeletal meshes. That means that if you, if I were to throw these and put an animation, they will all move the same. But now that I have the ones that I like, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create my character. So all you have to do is right click, blueprint class, and we're going to create an actor, not a character. We're going to create an actor. I'm going to call it character one, double click these, and we're gonna start adding pieces to it. So the first thing that I wanna add is the chest. So we're gonna browse to that asset. If you wanna browse to the asset, just right click. It's right here. I'm gonna throw this in here, and as you can see, it shows up in your blueprint. Okay, let me position the camera this way. There you go. 
Okay, got the chest. Let's look for the boots. And let's do the gloves. Where are they? They're here. Uh, can I drag and drop them from the viewport? No, not really. All right, I'm gonna look for the pants now. And if you keep chest selected, then you don't have to do the parenting thing. It will just auto parent it. Let's look for the shoulders. There you go. And you can rename these to whatever you want. I'm just gonna keep their stock name for a little bit. And you can compile. And you have a pretty much unified character in a way. That means that you can throw this into the environment. So if I save, I were to go here, and if I throw this here, pretty much see that I can manipulate this as one piece. However, if I were to throw this in sequencer, I would have to animate each part separately. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make this animatable so we don't have to animate each and every single piece. Now, the way that I got this information was from the Unreal documentation. And there you go. This is what you need to do. I'm actually going to leave a link in the description down below. I'm gonna do it with you as well. Um, so this is the only thing that we need to do for to get this working. So we need to look for the set master pose component, and then we just need to parent all of the others. I'm going to do the same thing as they did here and make the torso the base of the controller. So if we go into our blueprint, you're gonna see that we do have a construction script and set master pose component. And as you can see, we have all the parts from our blueprint. So I'm gonna choose the chest and there you go. I'm actually going to make this the master. So I'm going to make it here i break all the pins here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to start drag and dropping. You can put this one in this slot. That's why blueprints are so cool to work with for us artists. And we're going to drag all of these here. We can just parent them all to the same. I'm not gonna click on this one. I'm just gonna leave it as it is, compile. As you can see, this means that everything is working fine. So save that. And what we're going to do is now we're going to go into sequencer. Let me delete this and put up a new one just in case. Go to sequencer, grab our character, throw it in here. We're going to only add the chest component. And then in track, we're going to look for animation. And let's say we want to do this is one of the animations that I have in there. So as you can see, the whole body animates perfectly with no problem. Even though they are still separate pieces, but because we did that small blueprint sequence, they all fit together and it works quite fine. Okay, now we have our character together. Let me show you something really nice that these assets have. So if we were to actually go here and into the material, let's look at the material for a second. You're gonna see that we have uh, several things to play with. I think this is a very cool material. So let's go into the rack effect and rack power. So if I do this, you can see how it starts turning into kind of like a very old and dingy uh, robe over here. You can take that off really quickly. But we also have diffuse color tint, so that means that we can change the color of this piece. Now, if I wanted to make it more on the reds or more on the blues or the greens or whatever, uh, you're just giving it a tint. You are not coloring the different parts. You're just giving it a tint for the most part. And I think this color is pretty cool. So you could do that. And again, this one updates as well because I'm using the material instance. So let's go into the gloves. Let's see what the gloves have. 
Uh, we can also, they all have the same thing from the looks of it. We can actually change the tint of the gloves because it's probably too bright. So what I'm gonna do is, there you go. So they match a little bit better. They do match and it looks more leathery. Let's see what can we do about the boots. Same right here, maybe make it a dark brown. And with the pants, um, they actually look fine. But let's see, let's just change the tint to something else. Uh, let's see, I think, yeah, that one looks better. Our shoulder pads, I'm gonna leave the shoulder pads as they are because I do like the way they look. But as you can see, we created a whole custom character with a very cool look by just adding a few things and like again like i said these are very very high quality assets now when it comes to meta humans if you have not watched my other videos all you have to do is if you are in 4.27 or before unreal engine 5 you have to go to bridge if not then you have to go to the bridge plugin if you're using unreal engine 5 early access but everything is in the same location so if we go here into metahumans as you can see i already have my metahumans right here but all you have to do is click on one of the metahumans it doesn't matter who and just click on start mhc and it will take you to the metahuman creator if you want to customize your own metahuman now I do have some metahumans here, and this is actually the one, uh, yeah, I call it this, uh, the one that we're going to be using for this tutorial. One of the things I recommend is keep it in the highest resolution. I know it's a lot, but it's just going to look a lot better. You have to download it and export it out. So I've already downloaded, I'm just going to click on export. Now, as you can see, I have my metahuman folder and there is something very particular about this metahuman because if i were to throw him in here you're gonna see there are, he is missing something he is of course missing clothes but i just took them out because we're going to be using this now as you can see he doesn't have the lower the um, upper part of his chest and what i did is one of the techniques to get his head to be without the shoulder so I can put his head on here. Now, there are various ways that you can do meta humans with custom clothing. There are actually tons of videos that I watch. The ones that have been the best for me, and the reason why I picked these two is because they have different uses. The first technique comes from Monoville. He actually has a very good tutorial on how to do a meta human with a custom body and this is where I got him. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below to his channel so you can watch his video and download the opacity mask that they made because that's the technique he used. He uses an opacity mask to mask the bottom and that way you don't have the shoulders because when you put the metahuman head on a custom body, sometimes you have the problem of having the shoulders around unless you create the body yourself and you customize around that. Now for that, all you have to do is actually go into the this folder, so the shared folder. I have, this is the address where you have to look for it. And double click on the material. This is a base material, so if you have more than one metahuman in your scene, all of them are gonna change. And just make this um, mask, and just add the opacity mask and you should be fine. Now if you want more details on that, please, go to his video and watch because he has a very good tutorial on how to do this. So this is technique number one. So technique number two, I'm not using this tutorial, but I wanted to point it out in case you're interested in using this. The Rococo channel has a very cool way to just get the head of the metahuman. It controls very well. It works as they say, because uh, I tried it myself and it's really good. The reason why I'm not using it in this tutorial is because this particular tutorial allows you to have just the head mostly. So it will serve for a character like this one 
where you don't need the neck. I do need the neck. So this one doesn't work for this tutorial, but I highly encourage you to watch this video because it's a very cool way to just get the head of a metahuman. Now, once we have the metahuman, all we have to do is pretty much add him to the blueprint. So he's going to look. So there you go. We have a metahuman. I'll probably pull him back a little bit. Like that. There you go. So we have a cool character uh, just by using these things. And of course, I'm going to show you how to add him to the blueprint. Now let's go into that. Double click your blueprint. And all you have to do is uh, let me browse to his head, this floating head. Um, all you have to do is make a duplicate. Always make a duplicate of stuff in case you mess up. So once you do the opacity thing, it's going to look like this. And all you have to do is delete the other body parts. So let me actually duplicate this one more time so I can show you. There you go. We're just going to eliminate torso, legs, feet body and all that remains is his floating head which is pretty much what we need so once we have that sorry let me get back to here we go into our blueprint we're gonna look for our head and we're gonna throw the head in here uh, also make sure you do the LOD sync to zero so if I double click the head you're gonna see that there is this LOD sync. If I click on it, you're going to see that the force LOD is zero. This is defaulted to minus one. The reason why you want to make this zero is so you can see all the hair and all the good stuff, uh, even if you're zoomed out, because it's very jarring. Every time you zoom out a little bit, it actually changes to the other LODs and it looks horrible. So make sure you do that before doing this so it looks correct. Then all you have to do is get the head, throw it in here compile and we pretty much are good to go except this head is not positioned where I wanted it to be so you can just make it a little bit higher so as you can see it showed up over here as well because it's updating in real time now this head's a little bit small for this body so I'm just going to do 1.07 and there you go okay so once we position it this way, it's not going to work. And the reason why it's not going to work is because he is not parented to anything in the bone chain. Even if he's parented this way, if he's not parented to the bone chain, once you do the animation, this is not going to work. So what we need to do is while on your head, uh, I mean the character head, not actually your head, you have to go into sockets and you have to Make sure that you type head. Some people like to do it to the neck. Um, I have not gotten good results when it's to the neck. So there you go. And now the head's going to do this. It's going to turn on its 90 degrees. So all you have to do, make sure you have angle snap on. So turn it 90 degrees and bring it back down again. to a position where you think it looks best. And actually, I like to go here and look at it from this angle. I see that I can move him a little bit further back. There you go. Probably around here and you can take it out this way. Okay, there you go. So now we have a functioning character with a metahuman head. All you have to do is compile and save. And we're gonna go and we're gonna grab our ass and we're gonna throw it into sequencer. Now the cool part of this is that it actually kept control rig for the face. So if I wanted to animate his face somehow, I could do it. I have all the controls around here. If you wanna do that, I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm actually going to show you how to animate him first. So we take rid get rid of that, we'll go to character, track, and we're going to add a track for the chest like we did before. Now, once you go into the animations, it's just going to show you the animations that you can use for the ROG. If you wanted to use it with other animations, it's actually pretty easy. You don't have to retarget anything. All you have to do is go to the content browser, uh, go here into 
let's say, uh, where is it? There you go. Right click on the asset and you're going to see that there's something called skeleton assign skeleton. When you create your character with these assets, it's going to use the skeleton from that comes with the asset pack. And we want to assign another skeleton, maybe from a pack that you downloaded, which I actually am going to use here. So let's assign skeleton. And you can see I have a bunch of skeletons here because I have some asset packs that I uh, purchased. And we're going to be using, let's see, let's use the sort one. I have a, uh, this is a paid pack. You're going to use whatever asset pack you have, but I'm just going to use this one. I'm going to click accept. And after that, if we go into sequencer, go to animations, I have all the animations available uh, for the sort pack without actually having to retarget anything. And the reason we're not retargeting anything is because we grabbed the pieces that were related to the mannequin. So everything is one to one pretty much. So I'm just going to grab, let's say this one. And there you go. So this is kind of like the one that I have over here. And he's making that attack. Pretty cool attack. I'm going to play the animation. Boom. Let's make it longer so we can loop. Okay, so as you can see, boom, he does that with the sword and uh, you just have to stick a sword in his hand. Now there's a little bit of an artifact here where I would probably uh, move his head a little bit to the side so it doesn't show up like that. But you know, those are some little fixes that once you add the animations, uh, you can just change those if you wanted to. But as you can see, we pretty much have a custom metahuman with a custom pack that's being added to these other free assets so thank you very much for watching uh, remember to leave a like leave a comment leave me your questions down below if you had any problems any trouble with this i want to know down in the comment section so i can help you out and um i'll see you in the next video